Get ready for some of TV's most elaborate insults and some not so cunning plans. I've never had anything you doctors didn't try to cure with leeches. A leech on my ear for earache, a leech on my bottom for constipation. They're marvellous, <laughs> aren't they? Well, the bottom one wasn't, I just sat down and squashed it. <laughs> Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 Blackadder moments. Before we begin, if you enjoy this video, be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we're taking a joyous jaunt through every episode of the brilliant Blackadder to find the finest, funniest, and most memorable scenes. Number 10, Edmund's Death, The Blackadder. The first series often divides opinion with fans and critics, but these final scenes are etched into sitcom folklore. Ever since the opening episode, when Rowan Atkinson's character inadvertently decapitates the king before self-styling himself as the Blackadder, Edmund has been determined to improve his status. And when, in episode 6, he sees his titles reduced to just Warden of the Royal Privies, an overthrow is required. Some more beer! Hooray! But things do not end well. And I do not think we need go into the attributes of the Coddling Grinder! <laughs> For Blackadder, or for anyone else. His name lasts as long as our dynasty. <laughs> Number nine, Blackadder gets bladdered, Blackadder 2. What he is trying to tell you is that you appear to be wearing a pair of devil's dumplings. <laughs> Ever try being in two places at once? How about a night with the boys and a night in with your ardently religious but fabulously wealthy relatives? That's the task facing Blackadder in the second series, who must balance both parties under one roof and try to dodge drinking alcohol. Come on, lads! <laughs> Let's give him a real drink! But as we come to see, he's all too easily inebriated. In a matter of seconds, he's lost his bet with Melchard and blown his chances of inheritance. Percy the devil farts in my face once more. <laughs> <laughs> Number eight, all at sea, Blackadder 2. Ah! Where's this barnacle-bottomed, haddock-flavoured, bilge rat, sir, rather a Wally Raleigh, then? Let's stay with Elizabethan England and Blackadder's attempts to outshine Sir Walter Raleigh. The adored explorer is in his element upon returning from his latest sea shanty, but Blackadder remains unimpressed. Why, around the Cape, the rain beats down so hard, it makes your head bleed. So, some sort of hat is probably in order. <laughs> Quickly, and without any credibility, Edmund promises to sail around the Cape of Good Hope. But who to Captain Blackadder's boat? Meet Redbeard Rum, an insane and literally legless sailor played by Doctor Who's Tom Baker. Ah! You have a woman's hand, my lord! <laughs> of course, the voyage proves a verified disaster. They look much like Southampton to me, my lord. Number seven, the firing squad, Blackadder goes forth. Come on, George, with 50,000 men getting killed a week, who's going to miss a pigeon? <laughs> <laughs> to the trenches, and Blackadder's ill-advised decision to shoot and eat a carrier pigeon, which turns out to be General Melchard's prized pet. Dragged before a court and facing execution, a cock-up by Baldrick lands George as the defence lawyer. Deny everything, Baldrick. <laughs> Are you Private Baldrick? No! <laughs> Suffice to say, Blackadder's destined for the firing squad. Still, at least they're nice chaps. This scene sees the gunman pay the captain a visit on the eve of his death. You see, our sparring squads are a bit like tax men, sir. Everyone hates us, but we're just doing our job, aren't we, lads? <laughs> There's always a funny side to these sorts of things, right? I know you mean to be friendly, but I hope you won't take it amiss if I ask you to sod off and die. <laughs> Number six. Early execution, Blackadder 2. You've only got one arm! <laughs> to another death penalty, but this time of the Tudor variety. When Blackadder is appointed Lord High Executioner, he immediately mucks everything up by beheading Lord Farrow ahead of schedule. One thing leads to another, and before long, Blackadder has a bag over his head trying to imitate the deep, booming voice of Lady Farrow's one armed husband. Not as deep nor booming as once it was. Is that better? <laughs> In an unexpected turn of events, he almost scores a sexual favour for his troubles, but Baldrick breaks up that party, arriving in the nick of time. Oh, is it he? <laughs> right, that's it, time's up. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. Come on. Number five, how do I look, darling? Blackadder goes forth. Unusual name for a girl? <laughs> well, yes, it would be an unusual name for a girl, but it's a perfectly straightforward name for a young chap like you, eh, Bob? <laughs> 
when Blackadder directs a morale-boosting World War I cabaret show, his efforts prove an unexpected hit. Baldrick's Charlie Chaplin goes down a storm, but George's drag act is the highlight of the evening. Only it's so convincing, Melchard falls in love with her. I'm sure she's a girl with a great deal more spunk than most women you find. <laughs> and so, to this scene, the high point for a recurring gag. Melchard's prepping for his date with George, his darling, while speaking with his officer, Captain Darling. Confusion reigns from start to finish. I want to cover every inch of your gorgeous body in pepper and then sneeze all over you. <laughs> really, sir? I must protest. Number four, Flash Heart in the Trenches, Black Adder goes forth. Rick Mail's Flash Heart turns up twice in the original series and he damn near steals the show on both occasions. First, there's his bride stealing antics in Black Adder 2. Flash by name, Flash by nature. <laughs> <laughs> Then there's this boisterous barrage in Goes Forth. As a squadron commander, Flash's self-importance knows no bounds, and his every other word is packed with innuendo. <laughs> George and Baldrick are enamoured, of course, while Blackadder's his typical sardonic self. All right, you fellas, let's sit us down and yarn about how amazingly attractive I am. <laughs> yes, would you excuse me for a moment? I've got some urgent business. There's a bucket outside I've got to be sick into. <laughs> And there's even time for an Aide Edmondson cameo as the equally exuberant Baron von Richthofen. Woof. <laughs> Number three, C is four, Blackadder the Third. For our first breach of Blackadder the Third, enter Robbie Coltrane with a standout guest appearance. Oh, I don't know what you're talking about, but it sounds damn saucy, you lucky thing. <laughs> Starring as the proud pensmith, Dr. Johnson. Coltrane shows off his latest work, The Dictionary, but Blackadder's apathetic, still smarting from Johnson's apparent rejection of his own manuscript, so he galls his rival with some glorious wordplay. Every single one, sir? Every single word, sir? Oh, well, in that case, sir, I hope you will not object if I also offer the Doctor my most enthusiastic contrafibularities. Later, it's left to Baldrick to brainlessly fill in the blanks, much to Blackadder's mounting frustration. I've done C and D. Right, let's have it then. Right. Big blue wobbly thing that mermaids live in. <laughs> Naturally, Prince George is as clueless as ever. Number two, don't mention Macbeth, Blackadder the third. For all of Blackadder's astute wit and biting satire, sometimes it's the silly things which stick. Actors are very superstitious. On no account mention the word Macbeth this evening, all right? Take today's runner-up, for example. When a pair of pretentious actors are enlisted to help the prince better his public image, Blackadder's none too keen, obviously. But when he learns of their ridiculous Macbeth ritual, he gains an unconventional upper hand. Oh, Lord, you mean you have to do that every time I say Macbeth? <laughs> Name dropping the Scottish play wherever possible, Blackadder's satisfaction is matched only by the dramatist's desperation to perform their routine. All together now. I've only got one thing to say to you Macbeth. <laughs> Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honourable mentions. Because it turned out all along that the soldier who poo pooed him had been poo pooing a lot of other officers who poo pooed their poo poos. In the end, we had to disband the regiment. Morale totally destroyed by poo poo. <laughs> Tally ho, my fine, saucy young trollop! You're not Oh, and just uh, one more thing. Yeah. That is for every schoolboy and schoolgirl for the next 400 years. Number one, good luck everyone, Blackadder goes forth. Together we'll fight for king and country and be sucking sausages in Berlin by tea time. We finish with the final episode, for the original run at least, and perhaps one of the finest half hours in British TV history. Here's where our characters meet their end, going over the top in The Great War. Despite a last-ditch attempt to plead insanity by their captain, everyone's in attendance, even Darling. George has already admitted that he's scared, and we never get to hear Baldrick's final plan. Whatever it was, I'm sure it was better than my plan to get out of this by pretending to be mad. I mean, who would have noticed another madman around here? Instead, it's Blackadder who signs off with a gut-wrenching moment of sincerity. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo UK and subscribe for more great content.